The healing journey of Hannah Teredes begins with a terrible disease called eosinophilic enteropathy. It also begins with the journey of an Andrew Womack teaching tape titled, Your New Identity in Christ. Sent to England in 1990, this tape was lost until February 2006, when suddenly it became the key to a whole new life for one very sick little girl. This is Hannah's story. Right from day one, we knew that Hannah was going to be special. Um, she was a child that surprised us um, right from her conception. And um, I, w I was shocked to find out I was expecting a third baby so quickly. I suppose it really started when we realised Hannah was ill and we realised she was seriously ill. She was a funny colour and I didn't say anything to Carly at the time but I felt uneasy about what she looked like. She used to wake up in the night absolutely screaming in pain and people would say, well, that's just colic. And we had to keep sort of holding her over our lap till she was sick. And it really got quite stressful because as grandparents, we were quite worried about her. She wasn't feeding. She'd take maybe a couple of sucks of her formula and then she would just not be interested. Or she'd, if she'd drink any, she'd then vomit it straight back up again. She started off um, not taking milk very well. We tried all different types of milks. She'd be constantly waking at night time. She wouldn't settle and then when she did go to sleep, she'd be waking up, just screwing her legs up in pain, and then out would, would come all the formula that she'd drunk during the day. When we used to babysit her, um, she used to wake up with, with terrific pains. We didn't know what to do. And just to see her to suffer the way she, she, she was at the time, it was, it was heartbreaking. Um, and then when it came to weaning her, she couldn't swallow lumps at all. Um, so we'd have to mash her food down, um, and this was even when she was like uh, three years old. I remember going to the house and having all these little jars which always reminded me of little baby food that she was taking. And This went on and uh, nothing seemed to be happening and um, uh, what is this problem, you know? And, and Carly said to me, you know, it's, uh, they don't know enough about this. This is Hannah's personal child health record. It, re um, it was given to her when she was born and it will carry through until she's five. In it is recorded any um, appointment with a health professional and at each of those occasions they would record her weight and height for her age. As you can see it goes through from 11 days is the first marking there to when she came out of the hospital and the last one is three years 11 months. So there's quite a big track record there of um, what she weighed and how she fluctuated in her weight and height for her age. This red line in the centre here would be what an average child should weigh and this red area at the top and at the bottom is like a danger zone. So if the, if the marks fall within those lines then there's a severe problem. Um, as you can see from Hannah's little marks down here, she never quite made it onto the graph. This chart goes from age 1 up to 5. Um, so we can see Hannah's line plotted again across the bottom um, going up and down. And at the age of about three and, a, three and a half, she was about the same size as a nine-month-old baby. Some people were telling me that, um, you know, God wanted a healer, but sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. I was, I was getting all different types of advice, um, some extreme. Some advice was saying, well, maybe you've done something, maybe this is judgment on you. Um, and I, in my heart, I got to the point where if the Lord wants her to die um, for his glory, then so be it. And that's how, how messed up I was in my, in my thinking, if you like, because I'd had a lot of religious teaching to say that, that God takes um, lives away and, you know, maybe God wants her in heaven more than, he, more than on earth and, and things like that. So eventually, um, we'd had all kind of tests done at the local hospital. They referred us to a, a specialist children's hospital in London. Um, and there she had a camera investigation and they put a camera down her throat when she was asleep under anaesthetic and they, they took some biopsies. And when the biopsies came back, they said that she had a really rare autoimmune disease called eosinophilic enteropathy. Um, now, basically, that has two sides to it. That has, um, on one hand, it's an allergic type reaction. And then on the other hand, she had um, another part of the disease, which was autoimmune based. So her immune system would go into overdrive. Whenever she, she ate something, it would go into overdrive, thinking it was like some sort of foreign invader and attack it. She started um, deteriorating, she started losing weight. She was always very, very small, but now she started losing weight. 
um, and her hair was getting brittle and her, her skin started going like translucent and she, she lost energy. Um, she was uh, toilet trained and she lost that because she just lost so much weight and, and, and she, she couldn't really play properly, she didn't have much energy and it just deteriorated. And I suppose the last six months um, was the worst, she, she really went downhill and they tried several different um, extreme methods. Um, the last one was the, they went to the, the tube directly into her stomach um, to feed her. Actually, we were taking um, the, the boys up to my mum's. She lived a few hours away. She was going to look after them while Hannah went to have her operation to have her tube fitted into her stomach. But they'd got a car that didn't have um, a CD deck in it, only had a tape deck. And she said, Ashley said to me, have you got anything, any resources in your drawer that I could borrow? So I dug some stuff out and I said, well, I've got some real oldie stuff, if you want it, right at the back of the drawer. I said, I don't know if you want to listen to it, though. I said, because your father-in-law got fed up with the accent on this tape that he wouldn't listen to it anymore. And we put it in, and, and this, uh, this like, squeaky American accent came out. <laughs> and um, it was Andrew's tape, Your New Identity in Christ. And when we listened to that tape, it was like all these scriptures just opened up to us. And when I read it for myself, like Psalm 103 and, and, and 1 Peter 2.24, just all them things, by his stripes you were healed. You know, he's the Lord. He, he heals all our diseases, and redeems us from the curse. All these things. Sickness was a curse that we'd been redeemed from. All these truths just came flooding out. And it's like that one tape just opened the whole world up to us. God gave us revelation after revelation of, of the true nature of, of his nature, of, of um, who we were in him, of his will about healing. And um, I, went, I went home, my wife and, um, and Hannah was in hospital, I went home and went on the internet and downloaded lots and lots of teaching, um, God Wants You Well series, all free from Andrew's website, um, and listened to them over and over. And Ashley would download these teachings onto my mp3 player and I'd, I'd be laying in the hospital bed next to Hannah kind of getting this revelation like, are you listening to this Hannah <laughs> you know God wants you well you've been healed and we just got to receive it and she's like yeah <laughs> but um I mean I tried sharing this with, with other people but they just they were just kind of didn't really get it and they were just like yeah but you, you got to be careful because what about those people that what that aren't healed you know, you look around you and not everyone is healed. So how can you say that it's a simple thing? I'm like, yeah, but it is a simple thing. I know the problem isn't with God. And this was, a, this was a major breakthrough for us because we started to have confidence in the fact that God's will was to heal our daughter, which up until that point we didn't know. We, did, we wasn't sure whether it was God's will to heal her or not. Now we knew it was God's will to heal her. Uh, we could do something about it. Um, and this coincided with they, they put the tube in her to feed her. I can remember it as if probably it was yesterday because we went up in this room, it was quite high up. There were three or four beds in there but Hannah was the only child and it somehow seemed even worse, it made her seem even worse. She, she was so tiny, she was irritable and she was really in a lot of pain and once they started pulling her about with various blood tests and things, she would just scream and as a grandparent I, I, it just broke my heart to see her like that. This is a, a special medical formula um, it's very, very expensive. It's about 90, 90 pounds of tin at the time when Hannah was um, using it. It's hypoallergenic, it's just amino acids and basically she had this because her body couldn't accept any protein so the idea is that if we broke the food down into amino acids um, that it would trick the body into thinking that it wasn't accepting a protein so that it should be able to absorb the nutrition and grow. Um, and we used to use these scales, these are gram scales, and we had to um, measure per gram to an exact amount the, the amount of formula to water to, to reconstitute the, the powder. This was the pump that would pump the formula through the tube and into her stomach. The pump would go, it would be strapped into these straps here and then a different shape bag would be slotted in here and all strapped in securely. So most of the time we would slot this bag into a little children's trolley, like a, like a pull-along suitcase on wheels. She was so good with this pack in the back. 
she used to I remember she used to carry along sometimes dragging in the floor, you know. I can just see her there, you know, um very, very fragile. Um, but she still have what well, she's a she's a lovely lovely old child. Um, so this wasn't treatment, this wasn't gonna make her better, but this was gonna sustain her. At least she might start putting on weight. So when we first took her home, it was starting to work. Um, but then, um, about two days later, I think we took her home on the Friday, by the Sunday, um, she was vomiting again and she was reacting to it and she was going downhill again and it was clear that it wasn't working. Just just to see her, like I say, you know, I'd come away and, and, and my emotions just wanted to, you know, cry out. I was, I was angry, really, I suppose, if the truth be known with the doctors, that they couldn't find the answer to this. <laughs> We, we've been listening to all these teachings and uh, we just knew that the crunch time was coming, that, that somehow this had to happen, this healing had to happen soon because she was running out of time. At Andrew's teaching, he was the only man I'd heard who was confident that God wanted my daughter healed. No one else I talked to had that confidence. They were all maybe, so, but Andrew said, God wants your daughter well, you know, on his tapes. So I, I wondered if I could, I could meet him. So I went on the internet and um, I looked on his schedule and it had one conference in the UK, because um, it's an American ministry obviously, there's one conference in the UK, so I looked it up, it said the 16th of March. The conference was the next day, and I mean, that, that blows me away. That, that's just, God is so, so good. So um, we, we, we put her straight in the car, we drove up to, uh, to Walsall where the, uh, where the conference was. You can't take your baby out of hospital and take your children out of school and just go to the middle of nowhere to see someone you've never heard, that no one's ever heard of that we knew of anyway, <laughs> and um, to this conference, it's, it's irresponsible, you know? But, we, but just, it was inside, it's like, no, God put everything in place. And, and we, at that point, we were, just, we were focused on him, and it didn't matter what people said, we, we were gonna go for this. My faith at the time was, if only I could get um, Andrew to pray for her, and it wasn't that I was putting my faith in the man, I was putting my faith in God, I know that, but he was the only man who believed it enough and I wanted to go and see him so he, he, could, you know, he could pray for her. And I knew it was going to be the Lord that's healed her. When we first got there, it was a real struggle because Hannah was particularly sick and we were staying in a motel um, and travelling to the conference every day for the sessions. And we put the boys into the children's ministry. But Hannah was, she was just too sick. She would just lay at our feet in the conference on the floor and she had a little DVD player with headphones. So she'd be listening to the DVD player. Um, until she'd got just too uncomfortable. She'd still be attached to her, her feeding tube. So we was going up to the conference in the view of getting Andrew to pray for her. Um, now, it, the, the opportunity never arose. After each session, there was always a ministry time where Andrew would get, get up and get the students to pray for people. And every time we tried to go forward with Hannah to get her prayed for, because that, that's what we went there for. Something would happen, though. Uh, the children would come early out of children's church, or, or Hannah would start with, she'd get pain, or there'd be a distraction, or one, one of the boys would be upset about something, or they'd, they didn't do it how they did it the night before, something would happen, and we never got to get out the front. Um, our other two children were in the children's work, and was on our own with Hannah, but she was in so much pain, um, she wouldn't stop screaming, she wouldn't stop, stop crying, we couldn't comfort her, she was rolling around on the floor in pain. Now a lot of the other parents thought, She's having a tantrum, or um, you know, she's just she's just she's just having a, a, a bad day, and she's she's having a tantrum, and and we were looked on a bit as you know, get get control of her, but there was nothing we could do to console her. We tried everything. We went in the crash room to get away from the auditorium to be a bit quieter, and just the room cleared within seconds of all these sleeping babies. <laughs> I don't know what they must have thought. This was the last day now. Um, she hadn't been prayed for. She was getting worse, and um, I was getting mixed up emotions, and and part of me was feeling. Um, just, just despair, and, and I was feeling um, at the end of myself, if you like, with this. And I was thinking, if this doesn't work, then you know, there's, this, is, this was my last resort, if you like. And, um, and I, I, I didn't give up on God, but I was thinking, maybe we've gone too far, maybe this isn't going to work. We knew that her body was, was rejecting the formula, basically. So um, the time was, was very short, um, and the time on the conference was very short. And we were, we were thinking, we were just despairing at that point, thinking we've come so far with such high hopes 
to, to miss it. You know, we, we really thought, have we come this far to nearly miss it? Are we going to go home empty-handed? I had really no idea what was wrong with the child. All I knew is she had a backpack on. And when I came into the room and I stepped over her, here's the backpack, here's the child, and here's this tube. Honestly, it was the creepiest thing. It looked like a, a little remote control toy was the child, and this backpack was like this remote. It was awful. It was like this thing was just zapping her. It was supposed to be giving her life. But it was like bondage, absolute bondage. At that point, um, when she was screaming, uh, 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 the lady uh, who came to help us was uh, Leslie Decker. Um, and she worked at the college, we didn't know that at the time. And she was passing through the creche. She didn't just stumble across us by chance, you know. I believe the Lord set that up. And uh, she came in and she, she knew there was something wrong. And uh, she prayed with us. She realised it wasn't just a tantrum. I think, after a while, and uh, we explained to the situation. And that was probably the first time I really cried because up to then I kind of held it all together, you know. But I kind of, I was facing facts that she, she was going to die. And I didn't want to face that reality. Um, but I kind of got my emotion, emotion and got my hopes built to such a crescendo that that was like the climax. And then... To, have, to feel like that's going to be snatched away, that we're going to go home and our daughter's going to die. I just couldn't go there. I just couldn't, and there was nothing I could do about it. And once I started to cry, I mean, I, I couldn't stop. <laughs> just like the years, it just came out only one go. Having known Carly now, I know she doesn't cry really easily. You know, this is something, she's, she's one tough cookie. She believes the word and she harnesses those emotions and and she, she goes the direction that God wants her to go. But there was something happening in her heart right at that moment, a very vulnerable moment. And Leslie was great and she prayed with us and she just spoke really good words over us. And then she said she was going to go and get Andrew. And so we were alone for a few minutes. Um, and finally Hannah just cried herself to sleep in the buggy and she was calm. Um, she went and asked um, Andrew to come back there and Andrew and Jamie came in. And it was a real special moment because, um, you know, it wasn't up the front and it wasn't, it wasn't a, a spectacle, it wasn't a, a show or anything. It was in a, a little back uh, crash room and, um, and it was a real humble experience, you know. And, and Andrew just sat down and, the, and his wife was there and, and he, he, he let us just tell him the whole story. He just let us talk to him and tell him how awful it all was and how desperate the situation was and everything that was wrong with her. But our whole medical history just bleh in about two minutes flat. Whoever we told up until that point, whether it was pastors, um, you know, leaders, whoever it was, mature Christians, they would always be horrified and, oh no, and you know, they'd be horrified at how bad it was. Um, but when we told Andrew, he just, he just smiled and said, It's a piece of cake for Jesus. This is a piece of cake for Jesus. And this smile crept across his face and I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> this guy really believes this, doesn't he? You know, and that faith on the inside of us rose up. So Father Jamie and I just agree. And we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, Hannah has already been healed. We believe that she's going to be able to eat and gain weight and become totally normal. You know, Andrew doesn't go into these long, lengthy ordeals. He's the same as when he prayed for me and I received my healing back in 2001. He's the same today, 2007. It doesn't matter. He's still the same. He gets straight to the point with his prayer. Um, and then we were kind of left with a, a bit of a dilemma, like, what do we do now? And she was asleep in the buggy at that time, um, so she was asleep throughout him praying for her. Now, when she woke up, the first thing we said to her when she woke up was, Jesus has healed you. And um, she, as soon as she heard that, she smiled. She said, I want to eat. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> now you can eat. She, she, I said to her, so what do you want to eat? She goes, I want some lunch. I want to go to McDonald's. So um, I went and got my boys. I told them, I said, Jesus healed Hannah. And they took it in their stride. They just said, that's great. Now she can eat. In the meantime, we were driving around in a strange city looking for McDonald's. And you'd think there'd be a McDonald's in every city. And uh, we couldn't find it. So we ended up at this KFC. 
And she said, okay, KFC will do just fine. <laughs> so, okay. We bought some chicken and she sat there, took bites of the chicken, swallowed it, took more bites, swallowed it, ate some fries, swallowed it, ate some more, swallowed it. And we was all just looking at her in amazement, thinking, wow, she's never swallowed food like this before ever. Chicken nuggets, chips, fizzy drink, cake, ice cream. I mean, anyone who'd been on a fast for that long and suddenly ate that amount of food would be ill, right? and um, every food group possible that could cause any sort of reaction we tested in that first couple of hours, I think. But she just stuffed it all in and was just still grinning and running around, bouncing around the restaurant. And by now, I mean, well over an hour had passed. There was no sign of her flaking out on the floor. And normally uh, uh, the hour would be up, she'd be on the floor, she'd be ready to be plugged in, back into her energy supply, if you like. She was bouncing off the walls of the restaurant. So I phoned her up and that's when I discovered that they'd gone to um, Karis Bible College to the conference and Andrew had prayed over her, Hannah and she'd been healed. And I was just absolutely amazed. I just sat and cried. <sighs> she said, Hannah's healed. I had this phone call, she said, Hannah's healed. And I said, sorry. She said, Hannah's healed. And I couldn't take it on. She said, Hannah is healed. I said, what has happened? She got this phone call from Carly. She went to this Andrew Rowe and um, people laid hands on her and she's healed. And I said, what do you mean she's healed? She's healed, she's healed. And uh, we were just jumping, jumping, jumping for joy. Wow. Uh, we went back to the conference because there was one more meeting in the evening. We'd heard this little cough and we were kind of like, oh no. What's going to happen next? For the first time, she just started to choke, as if she was going to throw everything up and be sick, like she would have done sometimes in the past. The boys were so used to her being sick when they had that little cough, they'd run, run away, sick on me, mummy, sick on me, and just leg it, because they thought they were going to get covered in puke. She just started to choke, and straight away I remembered the teaching, you know, don't, don't beg God to stop it, just, just command. And I said to her, I said, choking, stop in Jesus' name. She stopped choking, and that was that. And then it happened again in the car on the way home. That night it, it happened again, and uh, and again Ashley spoke over her, and she was she was perfectly perfectly right as rain instantaneously. But I know that, that if we'd hadn't have had that grounding, if we'd hadn't had that teaching in our heart, we were kind of we wouldn't have known what to do. And so when the symptoms came back, we would have just thought, oh, oh, too good to be true, you know. And before you know it, full blown manifestation of disease would have been upon her, you know. But because we'd had that grounding, we'd had those those weeks of teaching where we got the word in our heart, we guarded our heart, we knew that we weren't going to let Satan rob her of her healing. He might try, but he wasn't going to win. And from that day, she's never had um, any medication, she's never had any formula of food through a tube, she's never had any uh, doctor's treatment, um, she's off all her medication, um, she's never been ill since then. And she just was happy, totally different child, happy little girl, just running around, she's still running around, she's still eating, she's still busy, 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 always getting into everything. So, so you know, she, she became the child she was always meant to be. Well, I've got a, a text message here that Ashley sent to me. Praise God, Hannah was healed yesterday lunchtime. She's been eating like a trooper since. KFC, sweets, yogurts, crisps. Cheese, chocolate spread sandwiches with no problems. She has been healed. Make no mistake, Jesus has healed her 100%, just like the word tells us so. 1 Peter 2.24, glory to God. But I believe until, I, until you actually experience a miracle close to you, um, like happens with Hannah, you can't really say, Personally, I couldn't really say yes, miracles do happen, and so I can say miracles do happen. Um, but when we went back to the hospital to have the tube taken out, um, they did all sorts of examinations and blood tests and things. And the unusual thing with Hannah was, aside from this rare disease, she also had a blood clotting disease. We didn't find out this out until she had her first surgery to put the tube in. Um, but it's a very rare blood clotting disease that only one in maybe one or two million children have. Um, and they did a whole battery of blood tests 
they came back with these blood tests and they couldn't find it. That had gone too. So we're like, praise the Lord. Well, we had all these, we had all our best arguments ready that if they were to come with these bad results, because we just kind of expected them to come out with bad results because they just always did. We were just ready to hammer them with a word and say, no, we're not having that. Just ready to, any, any little word from the doctor that was negative, we weren't having it spoken over our daughter. We were about to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we were like right there ready. And they just examined her and the doctor, I, I mean, I've worked in the medical profession and never in my career have I seen anything like this. The doctor looked at Hannah, looked at these test results and just physically stepped back and looked at her and she said, you're perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. And Hannah just smiled at the doctors and said, I know I'm perfect. Um, so they just said she was perfect then, which was great. And um, they, they gave a general anaesthetic, they removed the tube and uh, she came to and she was absolutely fine. And she's been fine since. This is Hannah's bedroom. Um, these are all her things. Oh, here he is. Here's the dog who had a tube in his tummy. I don't know if he has, he bears the scars of it. It kind of went in, went in there. This is where a doggy had a little tube in his tummy and then he got healed too. <laughs> now when Hannah was sick, she used to insist on praying for herself at bedtime. Most of our boys, um, they like to, us as parents to pray for them and, and pray that they don't have any bad dreams at night. But before Hannah was healed, when she was still really, really sick, she used to insist on praying for herself. And every night she'd pray the same prayer. She'd just thank Jesus that he loved her and that he had made her better. This is before she was healed. So she had a revelation on healing way before we did. We hope that you've been encouraged by Hannah's miracle. It has certainly changed everyone in the Teradez family. After Hannah's healing, Ashley and Carly sold their home and moved to Walsall to become part of Karis Bible College where they could absorb more of the teaching that made all the difference for Hannah. The next year, grandparents from both sides of the family sold homes and businesses to do the same. Today, all of them attend CBC. Of course, a special thank you is due to the partners of Andrew Womack Ministries who gave extra so that this teaching could be made available free of charge to people in need. We thank you. And in her own special way, Hannah thanks you. Yeah.